Hello, and welcome to the Pain Points of Interest podcast. We want to tell the stories of people, their businesses, and the journey that they are on. Our purpose is to gather a new perspective on starting, growing, maturing, and maintaining businesses of all sizes. So grab that cup of coffee, sit back, and join us as we start this conversation. Hey guys, welcome back. I am Sarah Harbuck, your host, and today we have an amazing guest, Carrie Wilkerson of Massage Health 360. Hello, Carrie. Hello. How are you? Great. It's a great Monday. It's nice and humid and gross outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's what happens here in Texas at the end of summer. It's just going to hold on just a little bit longer and kill us all with the heat. Yeah. Um, so why don't you tell everybody um, a little bit about yourself? So I am well, have lived here longer than anywhere else, but I um, got started in um, my business back in 2000. I was pregnant with my son and became a massage therapist, so I'd be able to take care of him and still work on the side and make a little money. And um, first moved to Beaumont after getting my education here um, in massage therapy and started doing massage there and then blew back here with Hurricane Rita. <laughs> Speaking of hurricanes, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> at the time that we're recording this, Hurricane Laura just, uh, just moved on through the East Texas and Louisiana area. Yeah. So, yeah. um, but, uh, so I have a degree in social work and okay. I was working in social work when I went to massage school and um, kind of got started because um, a co-worker was like, hey, there's more ways to help people than just social work. And, um, and so he introduced me to massage and explained to me about muscle memory and about the benefits of massage and at the time I was working with a child that had cerebral palsy and she had reached a plateau in her learning. And so I um, wondered based on what I had just learned about massage, if you know she got massaged, would she be more relaxed to take on new information? And, um, and then also remember what her would her body remember what she had learned before? That's an interesting connection. Massage therapy and social work. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I know, but that's inter Like, that's really cool. Like, I wouldn't have thought that those two things would go together, per se. But then if you have a, a, a you know, a client or a, a, mm -hmm. a patient, I'm not sure how they term the, them, yeah. but that has an issue and you, you know, I, I have had massage for years and years, at least every couple of weeks. And I got to say it tremendously beneficial for me just mm -hmm. and I you know uh, I'm sore I'm old you know I pull muscle <laughs> here or there um but yeah like for for someone who is suffering from a debilitating degenerative disease and doing that I, that would be yeah interesting so you so put those two was, things together and well that was sort of my theory that that's what sparked my interest more yeah. than anything in massage okay um was just that idea of um of muscle memory and, and the benefits of massage. And um, so anyway, so I went to massage school here, but then moved to Beaumont immediately after because my husband at the time had gotten a job down there and built a business down there and then had to move back here. <laughs> because of a hurricane. <laughs> so I went back into social work, but at the time, um, but because I went back, but because I had learned massage, I was like, how can I incorporate massage into social work? Okay. So I contracted, I was a massage there. I mean, I was a social worker at hospice, but I also did contract massage for the patients. Okay. And then 
when I left there, I went to um, work for early childhood intervention doing social work. But I worked with physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, and I went and learned infant massage. So I got to teach parents how to massage their babies to help improve their development that way. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Why would a baby need a massage? They are already very relaxed. (laughs) (laughs) And bushy. (laughs) Um, Well, in that particular agency, we're working with um, babies that have developmental delays or who are premature, and it really helps... Um, your skin is the largest organ in your body Mm -hmm. and so just that positive touch and um, all those nerve endings just really like helping their brain to grow and helps their immune system their digestion you know if you have a colicky baby that's a good thing to do is to massage is, them. Is that how you came to the name uh, Massage Health 360? Is it sort of an like all-encompassing <coughs> sort of <Yeah>. wellness? <laughs> yes. So I um, that's really the biggest thing for me has been to how is the best way for me to help my clients overall. So not just massage them, but I also want to be able to tell them what they can do um, on their own to be able to maintain what I worked on during the massage when they were on the table. Like, how can they maintain that? Yeah. Or how can they prevent getting in this position to begin with? So I also um, teach Tai Chi. Okay. And so Tai Chi is like ancient martial art, but it has internal health benefits. Right, right. And especially like the breathing, it helps to grow their energy and relax. But it's also the only uh, proven uh, exercise to alleviate pain like in arthritis patients. I did not know that. Did Did we happen to do Tai Chi together at the high school? No, that is a different instructor. Okay. No. Okay, I just wanted to check on that. Yes, I do what's called um, Tai Chi for Health, um, okay. is what I teach at Live Well, okay. where I work. And um, it helps prevent falls, helps your posture, and falls are like the number one, you know, accident for elderly people. I, t- I definitely see more older, mature, or however you say that without it being insulting, yes. people doing Tai Chi, actually. Yes, yes. Um, okay. And that's that's the reason why in insurance companies have actually, now they've proven that it prevents falls, that insurance companies have now started to pay for Tai Chi classes. Oh, wow. So um, That's crazy. I didn't know that. But I like it, too, because of the slow motion. It's like a, in- a massage for your internal organs. Okay. So pushing that energy here and there inside as well as outside. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And so, yeah, that's how I came up with the name is because I really want to be able to look at somebody say, you know, this muscle's weak, this one, you know, or this one's strong. And if you do this, then that will help, you know, I want to be able to help people the best way that I can and everybody's different. So you know yeah I'm a continual learner like I spend so much time and money going to learn new things so that I can find the best um technique or whatever to so help there's a lot person. of continuing education for you in, yes. in terms of you know bettering your practice I suppose yes. yeah um what about so like uh, some people you know, I, I, I've told people, I've gone to the chiropractor because I had this, like, slip disc or I had this it pressing, you know, issue. Oh, you shouldn't go there. They're quacks, you know. Have you had to deal with a lot of negative stereotype when it comes to massage therapy? Is there is there still a lot of that or has it gotten a lot better in recent years because people are looking for more holistic ways to be healthy? I would say that it's gotten a lot better. Because um, you've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. Off yeah, and on. Just about, Yeah. Well, really, the whole time, I just was doing the other jobs, too. Oh, okay. Good deal. That's good to know. (laughs) At one time, my CPA said, "Uh, you know you're not making, like, any money 
right? And I'm like, I don't, you know, this is my gifts. This is what I have to do. Yeah. Like, this is it's a passion project. It's a in passion a way. for me. Good deal. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I would say that's gotten a lot better. And, and um, I really see people, majority of the people that I see now don't see it as just a luxury or just something they do on vacation. Yeah. Because a lot of people do that Mm -hmm. once a year. They go on vacation or they go on a cruise and they're going to go get a massage, you know. But um, it's really, I always say it's preventive health maintenance, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take care of the stress, it's going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. It's either going to put you in the bed sick or in the hospital or in the grave so take your pick so i (laughs) take care of it now i was a professional photographer for many 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 years and so every weekend i'd have this giant camera around my neck and you know carrying all this equipment Mm -hmm. and up and down and moving around and i tend to carry a lot of tension in my neck and shoulders Mm -hmm. because of that and just stress in general you know the weight of the world on your shoulders Mm -hmm. i think comes from that tension you feel um and so i i started getting weekly massages um Mm -hmm. Uh, with Carrie Love when she was here yes. and uh, we did that weekly for years yeah. and then she decided to retire from massage therapy and go move and be mm-hmm. closer to her daughter and uh, we were friends so it was kind of like a twofold loss like I was losing my massage therapist and I was losing my friend who was moving away and I was like well I'm gonna I'll find somebody new but I'm gonna take some time you know figure yeah. it out and the months slipped by very quickly and I started getting terrible headaches very regularly and just feeling so just like so aggravated all the time and finally I was like I can't take it anymore and so I asked my sister-in-law because she was getting regular massages like where do you go and so I decided to try out her lady and uh, got that first massage after like eight or nine months of not getting one regularly (laughs) after having had them super regularly and oh boy I was like I can't ever do that again that was it's a huge it makes a huge difference Mm -hmm. and I've told people I was like just go I know it it can be expensive it can be it seemed like a lot but if you do it you're gonna have I feel like less issues down the road you Mm -hmm. know invest that money you know even yes. if it's just once a month, you know, yeah. uh, you know, if you're going to go get your hair done or your nails done, maybe trade them out sometimes. Because <laughs> I just, I feel like I would probably have constant headaches if I didn't go on yeah. a regular basis because of this tension I carry. And I'll, I've noticed I've go, I'll go to sleep and I'm, I'm doing these re- relaxation exercises in my mind as I go to sleep. And then I'll wake up though very tense. Like I was fighting a battle all night long or something, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I just I can't wait till I'm super rich and I can just have a massage therapist on retainer and every day <laughs> get a, a massage. Because to me, that's like the pinnacle of, you know, um, taking care of myself. That's that's self care for me. Yes. Like, let me get a massage, you know. Yes. Um, and so yeah, I feel like I feel like because of what the world has been experiencing these last four or five months. Yeah that's really important and everybody's stressed and everybody's super angry and I get it like the world is crazy so people like you are in great demand I feel like or should be (laughs) um and there should be one in you know every business like here we need a massage therapist to just ease the tension yes (laughs) and actually they do some businesses I don't know of any locally that do it but some businesses do have someone in bigger cities have people there yeah you know especially if they have a large employee amount of employees I had a friend who worked for Microsoft and they said that they would have somebody from time to time yeah. and then another friend who worked for Google for a while and that was like a common thing it was just more of a mental and physical mm-hmm. health is all very important and yeah and we tend to take those things for granted and we you know um they're very beneficial so yeah yeah that'd be it needs to be standard practice yes <laughs> so you you started this as a way to um be able to have an infant son and and do you know child care you know mm-hmm. keep, take care of him but also make some money and you were a social worker at the same time um you know a lot of people don't spend a lot of time planning their business you know some people they just sort of fall into it it mm-hmm. sounds like with what you've been talking about it sort of just kind of came to you it wasn't a big business plan that you thought out um no. what did you do when you officially decided okay i'm actually going to start this as a business so initially, um, like I said, when I moved to Beaumont, it was just find a place to work mm-hmm. that had 
either clientele already or, you know, or good walk-in traffic or good advertising. And um, so I worked several places, but the other thing was to stay in one location. So even, and I did that there and I did that here, the staying in one location, despite changing owners of the building that I was in. Right, right. <laughs> or business names too and so um so that worked for me but then my idea of like i said massage health 360 was when i went to work at live well four years ago and then the opportunity there to be able to teach a class and then now i'm working toward my personal trainer certification okay not necessarily to be a personal trainer but to have the legitimacy of explaining to people if you do these exercises or these stretches that that will help yeah continue what we did on the massage table Good. you know as yeah. far as yeah, yeah. the work that i did on them there and so um so it was really um, not so much I wouldn't say ever really a plan <laughs> as far as it just coming together the more that I learned and um, I needed a safe location to be that's very important for massage is yeah. being somewhere safe because you're massaging strangers that come in mm -hmm. you don't know them you know right but then all. they're also in a very vulnerable state. And they're in a very vul so vulnerable state. So they need to feel state. safe as well. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and, um, and like I said, I've never been really good at advertising myself and, or telling people why they should come to me in particular. Mm -hmm. And so being in a location where they either advertise for me or promote me. So I've worked in spas and hair salons and stuff where basically they talked up Right. You know. It's like a package deal. There's hairstylists, there's massage therapists, yeah. there's nail people. Yeah, you got a yeah. whole gamut of and, self care. And but everybody promoted each other. Yeah. And so that uh, that's been good. And then also just looking at my bills and saying, Okay, this is the minimum the amount that I need to make right. and so how much should I charge an hour? Yeah. You know. But then also be competitive with everybody else in the area. You don't want to charge too much or too little. Exactly. And that's yeah. such a hard thing for people who are in, in business for themselves because you you want to value yourself, but you don't want to overvalue for the area you live in, but you don't want to undervalue either right. and be working twice as hard for half the money. And I would say in Lufkin, that's been the hardest because a lot of people, a lot of massage therapists have kept their prices I mean, the same. The same for years mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like okay you can't keep living on that if the economy is you know yeah. it's expanding <laughs> and your your salary isn't yeah 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 and so um but I had a couple people tell me you know two things two uh, best pieces of, of advice was one is if you you know don't sell yourself short you know mm -hmm. value what you do you give a lot for you know two people um, and you spend a lot of time on your education in that yeah avenue so you should yeah be you know, and the other enough. yeah and the other thing is is that when you're so booked that you have a waiting list or you can't get people in then you're not charging enough mm -hmm. and so that's kind of a good gauge and a good gauge and and looking at you know the other therapists in the area and what everybody else is charging and right. you know doing what the market will bear but also yes. feeling like you're making it's worth your time yeah and all the energy and the education yeah. that you put into it yeah. what are some common um, misnomers I suppose or, or common um, misconceptions I guess uh, about your industry that you are that are obstacles that you kind of have to overcome or, or are there any um, well, first and foremost, I guess, is how they portray it in movies. and <laughs> Yeah, that's not really very accurate. I've been getting massages I mean, for like, over a decade. It and took me a lot to be like, oh, okay, you know, my first massage was very professional. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is what it is. Yeah, I can do this, you know. Yeah. Um, 
Because, like, in the movies or TV shows, it, it, they, they look like they have nothing on except this teeny little towel over their yeah. hind end, and that's not how it or is at all. And in, in they, I guess, sexualize it in movies and stuff. Yeah. And, um, and I know that there are those places, but they're not licensed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're illegal, yep. and they're not licensed. Um, that... I don't know some people believe that it always is going to hurt you know because maybe they've been to somebody who used their elbows or who dug in really deep and oh, then they yeah. were bruised and maybe they didn't explain about being hydrated being hydrated <laughs> and how it's like exercise you know yeah and you're working your muscles the way they're not used to being worked and yeah and so there is going to be some soreness there it shouldn't be pain right but soreness is is possible, yes. <laughs> if, especially if, for a person who doesn't work out, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, like with weights or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I've definitely been sore afterwards, but I've never been in pain. Right. You yeah. know. Yeah. Because um, I, I, I have, I've said, made a comment. And they're like, oh, that's why I can't go. I'm, I, that's just so painful. And I was like, then you, you were going to somebody who was doing it wrong. Well, I'm the, sore because my muscles or, have been worked, but I'm yeah. not in pain, you know. But some people are, their nerve endings are just so heightened and they're so tense yeah. that just to touch, I mean, half my family's that way, just to touch their shoulders, they're like, ah, oh. that hurts. Oh, you no. know, I can't and imagine. So, I mean, that's a lot of stress. Yeah, that is a lot of stress. <laughs> they need a massage regularly. <laughs> but, you know, just to, you know, ask for it lighter or, you know, make sure to communicate with your therapist that, you know, lighter is better, or deeper is better. Mm-hmm. I've always what? told mine, err on the side of it being stronger. Yeah. And if, if, I, if I think it's too much, I'll let you know. Yeah. Otherwise, go to town. <laughs> but a lot of people suffer in silence, right? Right, sure. And I, so yeah. they just take it and they're just like, oh, you know, maybe I just won't reschedule or maybe, you know, this will be over soon instead of communicating with the therapist. And and so I it's like a doctor's that. appointment in a way. You have to tell them, like, yeah. my, my lady, she'll ask me, okay, are we working on the same target areas as, as usual? Yep, yep, everything's the same. Yeah. Or or has there anything that's changed, you know? And right. then, you know, go from there. And every yeah. every week every or every other week when I'm there, you know, it's basically it's basically the same. But then I'll have, like, done something in the yard and, and right. messed up my lower <laughs> back or something. I'll be like, can we lick on that one a little bit more this time? Yeah. You know, and she's like, okay, cool. Um, yeah. But you kind of have to advocate for yourself right because you are going and paying for the service not necessarily for the luxury of it as you said but for me it's a health thing correct so you know i'm, I'm coming here to work out a, a, a you know a pain in my neck literally mm-hmm. or what have you so i'm i'm very vocal but then i'm also that kind of person and i get that not everybody falls into that right. category but when it you know you're going to pay for a service like that I think I think the massage therapist wants you to communicate with them. Yes. Please tell me so that I can help you. You yeah. know, that's they're not there to just dig their elbows in and right. <laughs> really yeah. make it worse for you. Um, yeah. I would imagine that that's a hard obstacle to overcome any with any business really any of the, the stereotypes, the typical stereotypes that are attached to it, yeah. jumping over those hurdles. Um, when you do any kind of continuing education. Uh, like certification is that on a regular basis every year do they make you guys relicense yeah how does that work to, um do <laughs> i want to say 12 hours of continuing education every two years okay we get our our license renews i'm trying to remember the number of hours because i also continue to maintain my social work right so that's getting cl- crossed in your mind i'm sure and <laughs> I I go way o- over and beyond the amount that is required for massage just because I love to learn. What all does that, like, does that require, like, um, seminars or weekend long retreats? Or how does that yeah, work for um, you guys? So usually Online they're classes? a day or to three, four day seminars okay. um, where you go and learn, like, so the special techniques that I've gone to learn to learn have been like three, four day seminars on certain parts of the body. And then you go back to another one 
for the next part of the body and gotcha. for the next part you know so or if you're doing infant massage I'm sure there's a whole separate <laughs> course yeah for that. that's a whole that's a whole separate thing gotcha um and but yeah mainly um uh, the like I said the techniques that I learned they're they're usually a class or, or three and I'm not a very good online learner um, more hands-on more hands-on yeah. and actually I'm trying to re- even remember it how much or if I don't think you're allowed to learn a technique online mm-hmm. um, that has to be a hands-on right um, well, the job is hands-on <laughs> literally yeah and <laughs> so. that's I mean I wouldn't want to I'm a I'm a hands-on learner, yeah. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> you picked a great career. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's not something I would really want to learn online, although that has become a thing, especially with COVID, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Um, so more classes are going online and, and even Zoom meetings, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're videoing yourself, working on somebody, and they're watching you, you know, how has how has this current state of the health you know crisis uh, affected you and your business? Have people been more reluctant to come because of the you know contact, the direct contact, or have you not really noticed an issue? Um, some have are still reluctant to come. Um, of course, we were in quarantine for two months, right? Um, so no business then. Yeah. But I did have people who were watching the governor waiting. <laughs> <laughs> calling me that was I was one of those people the, like calling me the minute that the governor said we were open you know luckily I got a massage right before the mandate came down for Texas yeah and I was scheduled to have one two weeks later and of course you know that didn't happen and so yeah. as soon I, I texted my lady and was like as soon as y'all are ready to go I am ready to come yeah. Yeah. I will wear a mask on the table I don't care like I have got this thing going on here yeah. so because you know it, it was a stressful time for everybody you know yeah. and you need that more than ever but I imagine that that close proximity, you know, hands-on contact, yeah. people who are super concerned or, or super at risk, that would be a, a, you know, a stress in as much as it was a release of tension right. because of that. So yeah. it's been, I'm sure, hard. So some, you know, a couple haven't come back, but most most of them have. Or, um, But I'm seeing, like, one less client a day because they want us to put enough time in between so that really they're not clean, crossing. Yeah. And really clean in between people. Yeah, and, more yeah. than... I mean, a little bit more than I already was. I mean, I was anyway, but yeah. now yeah. it's even more so, you know, remove the rugs, remove any, you know, furniture that's not wipeable with a Clorox wipe kind yep. of a deal. Yep. It's, or, it's really changed the way everybody's had to do business. And, yeah. you know, in some ways it's good, and in other ways it's just, it's it's a lot, you know. So I feel like this is you know um disrupted and and kind of had to make everybody sort of uh, as, as a guest last week uh record you have to pivot constantly you know yes here and there with whatever changes they they give you so yeah yeah what would you say um this business has taught you about yourself like um you know you you seem to be a very service oriented individual yes. you want to serve other people <laughs> so you know have there been any sort of revelations to you about your oh I didn't know I liked that or did that or <laughs> um it's funny when I went to college I started out in education but I changed from education to social work because I couldn't stand up and talk in front of people oh <laughs> and it didn't matter what age they were <laughs> and <laughs> or how well I know them um and so uh but ironically people have often said to me you should teach massage or you should teach you know martial arts or whatever and so here I am now also teaching tai chi right but I'm doing while I'm teaching so it's not as nerve-wracking right right okay and um and uh so it's just funny that I've kind of gone toward and I do teach my clients but some too but it's on a one-on-one basis and I'm way better at the one-on-one and um I think yeah um but it is funny that even though I started in that and then changed that I'm kind of 
back to Going teaching. Back to <laughs> teaching in some ways. And um, I'm not good at bookkeeping, which is part of the reason I got out of social work is because I couldn't stay on the paperwork. Oh, yeah. And um, there's a lot less paperwork in massage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. Social work is probably just paperwork, really. Yeah, I mean, and, and I'm not behind a desk. So, yeah. Um, and again, not good at advertising myself. So to be around people who elevate me or who advertise for me, you know, or encourage me to do um, this whole online and techie stuff. I've never been good with that. It started in my first social work job and I sat down at the computer and it went black and I couldn't get it fixed for six months. <laughs> and so, oh, no. <laughs> so using computer stuff, but with quarantine, I'm jumping into that and having listened. You're having to, to pivot and figure it out. Yes, yep, yep. having listened to y'all's <laughs> podcasts and wanting to do online sales and online education type stuff, mm -hmm. um, even just information for my clients. Um, is really the main reason that I would have a website or have my Facebook page is to provide clients with information. Um, because I'm only one person, I can only see so many people in a day. Right. right. <laughs> um, I'm a people pleaser, and so the scheduling of clients. Yeah. Which I don't have an online scheduler because I want it to be my schedule, right? Mm -hmm. But that to me is stressful because I want to get everybody in. And but you again, can't work I'm, 18 hours a day. I'm either. only one person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so just those kinds of things. I would, that's really that's, what I would imagine that's hard. I never had that problem when I was scheduling photography things or consultations or what have you. I was more of like, this is my schedule and these are the hours I can work. Right. But I'm, I'm definitely more forceful in that. And all, over the years, um, <laughs> real life things just taught me you're going to have to be a little harder about those things or be more like rigid and have boundaries. And so yeah. I imagine when you're a service oriented individual and you want to serve people, and getting them all in is a very stressful thing to have to worry about. Yeah. Like, oh, I have 10 people messaging me wanting a massage today and I can't do it. You know, that's, yeah. that's got to be really hard. Um, but, t you know, telling yourself I can't serve yeah. everybody well if I did that. Yeah. You know, um, do you and have I'm to do you have to get regular massages because you massage all day long? I do. <laughs> I do get regular massages. Not as regular as I would like them to be because, sure. you know, schedule. you're busy. <laughs> I'm busy. They're busy. You know, I asked my lady, I was like, how often do you get it? And she was like, well, maybe every four months. And I was like, what? And she's like, I know it's terrible, but you yeah, know, when, it is. when do you have time? <laughs> and I was like, I think you're going to have to start making some time. And she yes. was like, yep, yep, I need to. <laughs> so, yes, that's true. Um, what would you say would be your, um, your, your personal biggest achievements in this business? What's been most rewarding? Um... I don't know if rewarding was a word, but for a while I thought my biggest achievement was when I worked down in Beaumont, I got to massage the WWE wrestlers. Oh, <laughs> that is kind of cool. And up here I got to massage the performers that were in Stomp. Uh huh. And um, I remember that. So I thought that was like. That's really cool. That's so cool. Actually, it became really cool to my child when he was all into wrestling. <laughs> yeah. So. I was like the cool mom. I think that's an achievement, you know, <laughs> brushing shoulders with, you know, famous people. That's, that's always cool. Um, but then, like, one of my education slash uh, practice times, I worked on the athletes for Ironman Arizona okay. for a couple of years. And um, so to me, that's... Do you do a lot of work with sports athlete people? I do. Um, runners, triathletes. Um, even kids that are, you know, soccer, football, mm -hmm. you know, players, um, a lot of soccer players. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of running. cheerleaders, a couple of cheerleaders. Yeah. Um, cause that's uh, some intense athleticism there oh, too. Oh yeah. A lot of flipping and jumping and twisting around. Falling. <laughs> yes. Falling gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now I would say the fact of working on and receiving referrals from doctors, physical therapists, 
and chiropractors. Okay. To me, is a is a that's validity. Yes. Right from other when med- the other medical, medical community professionals is saying yes, you should go see this person to help you with this issue. Yeah. That's I'm sure that's especially in a profession that's been fraught with some seriously negative things yeah. <laughs> um that's definitely very validating i would think yeah um what advice would you have for those who are say interested in massage health or massage therapy and they wanted to become a licensed professional what would they need to do um find a school near you which is difficult because we don't have one right here in this area anymore no, you have to go to beaumont or to Tyler, I would say, are probably the closest um, ones that I'm aware of. Um, and then at, now it's a 500-hour program. Oh, wow. Um, when I went almost 20 years ago, it was 300 hours. And so I went on, like, Monday, Wednesday night, you know, Yeah. And uh, for nine months. <laughs> wow. I know it's nine months because I was pregnant the whole time. <laughs> Um, but, um, and then when you go to find a place to work, there's two things. So you can either go work somewhere and pay rent or, which is hard, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have clientele yet and, or you go somewhere and you pay a percent of what you make. So some 60, 40, you know, the owner gets 40%, you get 60% mm-hmm. a lot of times, sometimes 50, 50, and depends on what they provide and right that kind of thing. Um, I would say that when you're starting out, it's helpful to have another way of income. Because it can be slow at first. Because it takes about two to three years for you to build a clientele for you to live on we'll that live on it, amount yeah. of money. Um so yeah those so it's a it's a transitory kind of job where you you're doing it but you also kind of have to do something else on the side or as your main job while you build that business up yeah it's not an immediate get rich quick kind of situation and I think a lot of people go to massage school thinking that yeah even though they tell us that's not the case when you're in massage school they're like no that's not gonna happen Mm -hmm. but I mean there are places you can go work right like massage envy I mean you're gonna have clientele coming there sure you know there's more big corporations now that provide massage um i can't speak to that too much because i've never worked for one of those right right um but yeah it's a it's hard when you're building your building so it takes some perseverance to kind of get through that hump of finding clients and, yeah. and building up your your base of people who come in on a regular basis yeah um I think that's why a lot of women do it who have children they can kind of yes. fit it into their schedule and and build it slowly over time because mm-hmm. it's a supplemental income at first and then you know as the children yeah. get older and you can you know you by that point you've got all these clients and so yeah it's definitely from my experience just talking to people who I've done right. massage with they that's been their yeah the same kind of advice is yeah it doesn't start out no big at first you gotta <laughs> you gotta work at it so you know that's some things hit real quickly but I feel like something like that with any any kind of health related mm-hmm. it, it's kind of a slower burn to a bigger yeah a bigger base of people and it um oh I forgot lost what I was gonna say <laughs> lost that train of thought lost that train I of do thought. that a lot um <laughs> yeah it's so you so you're saying get a find a reputable reputable school do all the requirements and then basically try to get a job where you're working in an environment that other people can help promote you like a yeah. salon or something because yeah that makes it a lot easier. or that has good foot traffic so that you you know you can build that clientele a little quicker i was going to say and as you progress if you can go and learn something like extra extra that creates a little niche for you Mm -hmm. um that maybe not everybody else in your area is doing yeah then that's helpful too because people would you know you can you can market to that are there many uh, you, you mentioned infant massage you know that is definitely a niche market do you, are you the, one of the only people in the area who who provides that? You know what? I don't even I don't really even know, and I don't do it a lot anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, some occasionally. Uh, I think I only know of one other woman who's ever done it. Yeah, 
I don't think she did it very regularly either. So. Yeah. Um, because I'm not massaging the baby. I'm teaching them the how to massage their child. I so gotcha. I'm working on a doll. I They're see. working on their baby. Okay. So that they're developing that bond with their child, not me. Oh, okay. But that's, now, that's like, good. in the NICU sure. down in Houston, they actually have massage therapists that massage the babies down there. Right, right. Um, and so that is a whole another market that people can go. Or if you're young and you have no family, you can go work on a cruise ship or at that a... That is true. Yeah. At a resort at somewhere. At a resort somewhere. Um, I, know what, I, was, I was doing a destination <laughs> wedding back at the end of June in Cabo, and they had a very elaborate spa. Yes. <laughs> massage therapy. And uh, the prices they charged, whoo, boy. Uh, yeah. Now, I know they're not making all that money. Right. But, um, right. yeah, definitely, if you if you have an attachment, that's, a, that's an option. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are there any things that, that you would do differently now or things that you want to improve upon for the future or – um, things I'm going to improve on are more computerized stuff. So I'm, I'm like the slow, like <laughs> drag me into this century kind of person. And so, um, getting a website and doing my, the paperwork online instead of, you know, having actual pieces of paper for people's health histories that they have to fill out when yeah. they come get a massage, you know, um, and jumping in front of a camera <laughs> <laughs> to show, you know, some ways that people can massage using a ball or a foam roller or um, how to fold a fitted sheet. Um, <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a trick a lot of people don't know how to do. So. Exactly. Now, I will, I will say, uh, I've, I've been suffering from some pretty frequent migraines, and I just messaged Carrie on Instagram like, hey, uh, I don't know who else to turn to. I feel like I'm dying. Could you please help? And so she gave me some tips that, that really did help. And, and I think that that says a lot about your character is that even though I was not able to come and get a massage from you, you were still willing to, to give me advice just over the internet real quick. Like, hey, you know, I care about you as a human and I want you to feel better. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's a good quality. That's a, that's a good thing. I mean, obviously you couldn't do that. 24 7 or you would never have any time for yourself but you know but it definitely does make me more willing and and you know ready to be a client of Carrie's like whenever yeah. she's ready for me <laughs> yeah. I know that she's going to take care of me I know that she's going to listen to my concerns right because she listened to my concerns even when I wasn't in a, a position where client. I could uh, yeah. pay her you know yeah, yeah. I think that's good. I think, you know, there's a lot of people who have that issue of not being able to jump quite into the 21st century and automate things or, <laughs> you know, integrate, you know, computer apps. And my husband's one of them. He doesn't, he's an analog. Let me write it down on some paper or some post-its. Uh -huh. And I don't know where I put it, but I wrote it down somewhere, <laughs> you know. And I, <laughs> much to the chagrin of the people he works with, like, oh, come on. Um, but I do get that some people just work better with the physical copy in their hand. Yes. So it is, it is a hard transition. <laughs> transition to make but recognizing that it's a necessary one in order to be efficient yeah. in today's world is you know and in these days with everything that's going on doing things like a podcast or some sort of a zoom call where you're teaching right. people is almost a necessity you know yes. to kind of get your business out there or have a new avenue in which to reach new people right you know um we're all having to figure out different things these days because the yeah. way the world was back in February is not how it is today and <laughs> we've got to invent some new things and and kind of jump out of our comfort zone with some yeah. stuff you know I'm not too crazy about video we did a video uh, podcast last week and I the whole time I'm sitting there watching myself talk and I was super self-conscious <laughs> and it made me like not as good at paying attention to what was going on in the moment I was like what I, why am I doing that with my mouth you know like <laughs> so I get it I get it there's these weird little things that we've got to try to figure out but, well uh, and to make money like you know to your live side hustle to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. to live when you're in quarantine or you know you gotta have to get over yourself and just kind of I gotta yeah. have to do it you know I gotta provide for my family so yeah. what does the future look like for you you're gonna continue to stay at live well or do you think about opening your own studio or how does that look for you, you? know I've thought about that multiple times over the years and I also have thought about people um 
I mean, I've been asked by people to come and work where they are. Mm -hmm. And one of my main things is safety. Yeah. First, and Live Well is awesome because it's open almost all hours of the day and every day. And there's always people there. And holidays, most holidays, and there's always people there. And so... And it's in a good trafficked area that right. you know, people it's accessible to people it's right. not out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and so um so that and then also I'm able to teach the Tai Chi there and so that's a benefit uh, to myself and my clients to be able to to have a location to to teach as well um so for now that's it's working out well it's working out really well um you know there's people at the desk so if somebody wants to buy a gift certificate when i'm massaging they can still buy a gift certificate you know at the hair salon part Mm -hmm. um you know there's a little bit of advertising there on both desks the hair salon and the through the front door and so so the system works out very well for you. The as system it is. works out. <laughs> so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, my philosophy. Anyway. Exactly. Just keep doing what's uh, working, and, and then when it doesn't work, we'll figure something else out. Yeah, that's so. good. And you're busy enough that new clientele is a blessing, but nece- not necessary. Exactly. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. That's I mean, always I'm good always. To hear. It's always nice to see new people. Sure. But I love all my regular people as well, and and I usually can still find a way to fit you know people in um or i try anyway yeah although i am getting better at setting that boundary and saying Saying no no. that's happening (laughs) it's hard it is hard i get it sorry well why don't you uh why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on social media give us your website your phone number or your physical location okay so physical location is inside live well at 1616 tulane drive here in lufkin and um right behind the mall and uh by target (laughs) by target (laughs) um and then online uh, my business facebook page is massage health 360 and uh, website's coming (laughs) google's coming (laughs) and you're also on instagram and i'm on instagram at massage health 360 perfect yeah. So they they have no excuses now. You can message you on Instagram <laughs> or Facebook and that pending website. And yes. you have a phone number that people can reach uh, out. Yes. My phone number is 936-240-2597. Awesome. Well, I encourage anybody who is having some stress or some tension or, you know, just needs some self-care to give Carrie a call and get a massage. You will thank yourself later and you'll thank her. Um, Carrie, thanks so much for coming on and just, you know, letting us have a glimpse into this world and, and letting people know, you know, what massage health is all about and uh, taking time out of your schedule to come and talk to us. Thank y'all very much. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to wrap us up for today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, you should tell us your story. Send us, uh, send us your name and your business, and we'd love to have you on as a guest. Uh, you can find us on our website at painpoints.com or any of our social media at painpoints. Um, if you are listening to our podcast or it, uh, on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review or a comment. It really helps us out. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. And if you're on Spotify, give us a follow so you never miss an episode, guys. We are really appreciative of how uh, this is kind of exploding for us, at least for our definition of exploding. So thanks so much for listening. Y'all stay tuned uh, next week, and uh, we'll see you then.